I have so much to do this week. It's actually unreal. It's Thursday and I still have so much to do. But I thought I'd kick off the start of this video with a little studio tour. Uh, it's not finished, but that is part of this week's jobs. Because, uh, as you can probably tell, there's some echo in the room. And I want to get rid of that, or at least reduce it down a little, so I can record more videos in here. So let's do the studio tour. So as you come in the room, you can see all of the recycling that has to eventually be taken downstairs, but I haven't done so yet. My Cricut, which I will eventually use this summer. Uh, these drawers I got from Ikea when I got my desk. And this is my PC. If you're curious about the specs and stuff, I will put a video link up here for you to check it out because I built it myself. Uh, still quite proud of that and it works so, so well. Um, the desk which is also from Ikea. I think this tabletop was like 29 pounds and then I bought the legs separately. They're adjustable, so I can have it higher or lower if I like. At this height is just the right uh, height for standing for me because I'm quite tall, I'm like 5'11". So my BenQ monitor, my usual tablet, which is a Wacom Cintiq, my first ever tablet, my iPad Pro, which I've been using a lot more lately, especially with Procreate, I'm really, really liking it at the minute. And we have a extra tablet on the desk because I'm going to be reviewing XP Pen's Star G9 6OS Plus tablet. So, so far, I really like it. It's a great beginner tablet, but I'll get into the specs later. Uh, we have some photo frames and photos that I haven't actually put up yet. Um, we have my bookshelf and a small selection of my art books and um, sketchbooks and some snacks uh, that I brought with me when I moved. It's not perfect, but there's a lot of empty wall space and obviously because of the echo in the room, I need to do something about that. So uh, to reduce the echo in the room, I need to make some panels for this wall and these, this bit, this wall and put some foam in this corner because apparently you're not meant to record in corners of the room because the echo is worse. Uh, but apparently that's exactly what I've been doing all this time because my mic usually sits over here when I stream and things. So at the minute, I'm currently very, very busy with freelance. And after that, I need to film the tablet section of this video and order the materials. So I've just measured using the tape measure and it looks like I can fit five panels on the wall in this room. So I'm gonna go for one here, uh, one on this wall, and then we're gonna have two or three along here. Usually when they remove the echo in a room, a lot of people put panels on the ceiling. Not too sure, I think it might be too heavy, so I might have to get some sculpted foam that people use and stick that on the ceiling just in case. So it shouldn't be too bad. Now, I am not good at DIY, but my dad is, and since he knows how accident prone I am, he offered to make the wooden panels for me. Originally, I was determined to do everything myself, but I very quickly realized that things would be finished a lot faster with help. So big thanks to my mum and dad for everything. You're doing this all one by one, are you? Maybe. Oh, this is dangerous. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just gonna lay out on the floor. I'd watched a ton of tutorials on YouTube to find out what other people were using and how they set up the frames. So I chose Rockwool Insulation. The pack I bought was £32 and had six pieces. As I didn't want anything to go to waste, I decided to make six panels. We used the measurements of the insulation to create the wooden frame. So the length was 1.2 meters, width was 0.4 meters, and the thickness was 100 millimeters. The insulation was actually quite spongy, so you could compress it if you wanted to. There were also two pieces of wood at the back of each frame to give a bit more support and a hole at one end so we could hang them from the wall on a bracket when they were finished. The cost of the planks would have been £57.40 and I would have bought them with the rock wool from B&Q if they had been in stock at the time. 
Luckily, my dad had saved bits from his own projects and he ended up recycling wood from an old wardrobe, a door frame, skirting boards and some scaffolding boards to make up what we needed for the six panels. To hold the frames together, he used around 16 50mm drywall screws per panel and the rest was up to me. With insulation slotted nicely in place, I used weed barrier fabric to cover the entire panel to stop the insulation fibres escaping, because I definitely don't want to be breathing that in. I'd bought one roll from B&Q for £5, but this wasn't enough. I ended up buying another roll from Amazon for £9.99, and with that one I had plenty left over, so I'd definitely recommend that one over the one from B&Q. Placing the panel face down on top of the fabric, I pulled it tight around the edges and secured it with a lot of staples. I found it best to staple the middle and then the ends of each side. I'd then add more staples between those until I was happy. Then I would fold and staple the corners. I used my dad's electric staple gun and this pack of 5,000 staples which I bought for $5.98. I chose a plain cotton to act as my finishing fabric because I'd had the idea to decorate and paint them myself, but that's a project for another video because by the time we finished up this last panel I was so done. I ordered 8 meters of this and it came to £31.92. It was priced at £3.99 per meter, but I had quite a lot left so I could have bought 6 meters instead. I'll probably keep the extra materials just in case I need to recover a couple or want to make some smaller ones in the future. No, I think... Ugh. used to work, Catherine, that's the trouble. <laughs> the final touch was to attach four corks to the back of each panel so when they were fitted to the wall there'd be a gap to allow the air through. I bought a pack of 30 for £5.39. Though the backs of the panels don't look too fancy, it doesn't bother me because I won't be looking at them. Now once I got them all upstairs it was time to clear the space and do a clap test. That's so echoey. Once the space was ready we used the brackets to mark out the holes on the wall for where I wanted the panels to go. We then drilled the holes, used raw plugs and 30mm screws to fix the brackets to the walls. After that I used scissors to cut the fabric where the holes were in the back of the frames and hung the panels. These brackets were originally straight but my dad bent them to shape for me. You can get a pack of six for around £11.99. I don't think they'll ever trust me with the drill so thanks to my brother for helping me put them up. Now it's time for a before and after. So the total cost of making these panels for me was £90.28 and, and if I'd had to pay for the wood, screws, brackets and plugs it would have been £172.29. So shout out to my dad for being a DIY king who hoards everything and anything that might come in handy. Now to take this project even further I could get some acoustic foam to place on the ceiling and some base traps to fit into the corners of the room as well. But for now this is enough and I'm really happy with how it turned out. This voiceover was done with the panels in place and I hope you enjoyed watching the video. So recently XP Pen sent me the Star G9 6OS Plus. Although I use the screen tablet I like to know what is out there, especially if anyone asks me what I would recommend. So um, I'm going to give it a go and see what I think. So before we get started I just want to show you what is in the box. I've unwrapped everything and there's little bits and pieces everywhere. So this is the tablet, it comes with four express keys and it has 8192 levels of pressure sensitivity which is, to be honest, is far more than you probably even need. You're probably good with about 4000, it's definitely more than my Cintiq has which is crazy. You then get this tablet pen which has one programmable button and an eraser. It also supports tilt which means if you've got any fancy brushes in Photoshop or anything like that and you turn it around the brush will react to that and the tablet will pick it up. You also get the cable, spare pen nibs which is always good to see. I'll just put that there. 
ring pulley thing that helps you remove the nibs. Also something that's different about this tablet is that it comes with adapters so you can use the tablet with your Android phone or tablet if you have one. Now I don't so I probably won't use these but um, it's a nice little feature if you do like drawing on your phone. Then of course you get all the usual leaflets so you've got your warranty card, your thank you card, uh, a little note to tell you where the drivers are at, uh, the quick start guide, and then the quick start guide for Android devices. So that's all a really nice, neat little package. I am really happy that they haven't included a CD now because uh, a lot of the times when you do unbox things and you get a CD and you try and install the drivers, uh, they're usually out of date before you actually install them and you have to go to the website anyway. That's everything that's in the box. Let's turn it on and have a go and see what I think. So as I was testing out this tablet, I actually really enjoyed using it. It didn't take me too long to get back into the swing of things because as you can see, my drawings aren't as polished as they normally are. And that's because I'm used to using a screen tablet and it's been a long time since I used one like this. Now, if you've never used a drawing tablet before, especially one without a screen, it does take some getting used to. When drawing with pencil and paper, you watch the movement of your hand, but with a tablet like this, you're looking at your computer monitor instead. Don't feel discouraged if you find it difficult at first because it'll start to feel more natural with practice. Setting up the shortcuts for Express Keys was super easy to do and I really like the weight of the pen, which isn't too heavy or too light and feels nice when I draw on the tablet, where the surface has a little bit of texture to make things feel more natural. I've tried screen tablets where they have a glass surface and I've always bought a textured or matte screen protector to make it feel a bit more like drawing on paper. On the tablet I use at the moment, I have eight programmable buttons, but only use around four or five anyway, so I didn't feel like I was missing out. The best thing for me with a tablet like this is how portable it is. I feel like I can take it anywhere, plug it in and just get to work. So overall, I would really recommend this tablet for beginners just getting into digital art or anyone who wants something light and portable that also connects to Android devices. Big thanks to XP Pen for sending me this tablet and providing a 15% off code for anyone who's interested. 